What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to learn how to put together grids in Swift UI. So we'll go through basically how to build this app that you see here. It is a lazy vertical grid. We'll talk about different grid layouts, how to set them up, horizontal, vertical, lazy loading, all that good stuff and everything in between. Make sure you destroy the like button as per usual. It helps out with video engagement and helps me make more videos for all of you as per always. Hit subscribe while you're at it if you're a returning viewer or even if you're new, if you're into iOS and Swift. I think some, something like 70% of you guys watch consistently but have not subscribed. God only knows why, so go ahead and hit that. Without further ado, get Xcode ready. Let's talk about some grids in Swift UI. All right, we're gonna get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're gonna stick with the app template and let's go ahead and call our project Swift UI Grid Demo. Make sure, of course, your language is Swift and both of these guys are Swift UI. Go ahead and continue. We'll save it to our desktop. Let's pick our trusty simulator, the 12 Pro Max here. And let me close this preview panel as well as the attributes inspector since we don't need either of these. Let's also expand our Xcode window here to give ourselves a little more room to work. And uh, without further ado, let's get straight into creating some grids. I'm just gonna hit that run button to make sure we're good to go. So cool, let me bump the font size. Hopefully everyone can see it. The first thing we need to do is have actual items to populate our grid with. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a uh, array here of the numbers one to a thousand. And we're gonna map this into a, a string for each of the elements. So we're gonna say element, and I'm just gonna stick in each number here. So we're left up with an array of uh, strings. So then in our body, we want to actually go ahead and create the grid. And we're gonna nest the grid inside of a scroll view because we want it to be scrollable. Now, before we create the grid itself, we need to supply a layout to the grid and it's gonna be an array of grid items. And bear with me while we just add one item in here and it's gonna be of type adaptive. There's a few different types, so we'll go over all of them with a minimum width of 100 and we're gonna get rid of maximum here. And now that we have this layout, here we can say we want a lazy V grid and we need to supply a few things here. The first thing being columns, this is simply gonna be our layout. And in the actual content, we're gonna do a for each over items. The ID will be backslash dot self. And here we can say item in. And each of the items that we're gonna supply is going to be a text with the given item. Now let's just go and stick on some padding for the sake of not looking totally ugly. Go ahead and hit command R to build and run. And you'll actually go ahead and right off the bat see a grid of four columns here. So let's talk about this a little bit. Firstly, it's a lazy V grid. So we're not front loading all the elements since there's a thousand of them, it's quite a few. We only load them under the hood uh, when they're loaded onto screen. In other words, once we scroll them onto screen. Now, how do we end up with four columns? So that's where this layout piece comes in and this is pretty interesting. So there are three types of grid items you can supply, adaptive, fixed, and flexible. And adaptive actually functions almost like a spacer where it's gonna adapt and try to fit as many elements in your uh, grid next to each other as possible, assuming it maintains a minimum of whatever we supplied here. You can also supply maximum, of course, but we have it in our case. Now, what you can also do is we can change this to be flexible. We can actually specify multiple of these. So let's go ahead and actually do four. The first thing you might think right off the bat is adaptive and flexible sound awfully similar. So what's the difference? The difference is flexible applies to only one item, whereas adaptive will apply to all the items. In other words, if I only have one flexible here and if I go ahead and run it, what you'll expect to see is basically one super long column, more or less a table view for those of you coming from UI kit. Now, if we quickly do an undo where we have four of these again and build and run, you'll notice that we now, once again, have more columns, in this case, four. So cool, that's how we can do a vertical grid. Let's also talk about the third type of item in here, and that is fixed. And uh, that one's not really all that 
interesting or surprising. You can basically fix a size in here. We're just going to do fixed of 100. We're going to have two of them. Go ahead and build and run. And you'll notice here that it's centered, but both of these are a fixed size of a width of 100. So let's go make this adaptive again. I'm going to do undo a few times. All right, there we are. Let's go ahead and change this. Instead of a vertical grid, let's see how we can change it to a horizontal grid. So it's actually really simple. We just need to make this a lazy H grid for horizontal. And this guy gets changed to rows. And I believe that's about it. Go ahead and hit Command R to build and run. Let's see what we get. So we actually get this right up here. And uh, let's see, what else do we need to do? We've got a scroll view. We want, we want to actually supply a direction on here in the scroll view as well. I believe we can pass in a parameter here of direction. This needs to be horizontal. Let's see, this one should be horizontal. And go ahead and get rid of all of this other stuff that it added on for us and close up that parenthesis. And let's see, hit Command R to build and run. And you should now see your grid and you can scroll it horizontally. So it's still gonna take up the entirety of the screen vertically, but you cannot scroll vertically. You're scrolling horizontally, basically what we had before. The only difference is the direction has changed. So that all said, let's go ahead and do a little bit of a more real world example. And in this case, we're gonna be building something that looks like the App Store, what you saw in the beginning of the video. So we're gonna first bring in a bunch of app icons. I went ahead and grabbed these beforehand. So I'm just gonna drag them in, make sure we save everyone a nice chunk of time. So we've got all our images here. We're just gonna drag these all in, just a bunch of random app icons. And now we can head back to our content view. We're gonna change this to be one to 12. And this is now gonna be the image name, which is gonna be image with a suffix of the number. And in this case, we want to wrap this whole scroll view in a navigation view. So we can add that really cool looking title at the top. Let's see, we want a navigation view. And let's give this a navigation title. And the title we're gonna give this is gonna be, of course, App Store. Now in each for each uh, loop, we don't wanna show text anymore. What we wanna start off by showing in here is an image with the item. Let's go ahead and style this a little bit. So we're gonna want some padding on it. We're gonna also want to set an aspect ratio. And uh, in this case, we're gonna stick with, let's see, aspect ratio. And we want to stick with the one where we can supply a content mode and we're gonna say fit. We're also gonna want to make this resizable. Sometimes this really loves to not work properly. I should probably put resizable up here first and foremost. We're also gonna give this a corner radius so it looks nice and rounded like an app icon. We're also gonna give it a border. And the reason we're gonna give it a border is because some of the app icons uh, have a white background, so they might blend in. So we're gonna give it a secondary color border. And let's just go ahead and hit Command R to build and run. Let's see what that looks like, first and foremost. So we can always add in some more stuff afterwards. So it's building, and there we have it. So right now we're only seeing these two icons, which is not what we wanna do. So something is a little strange here. First of all, they're super large. So let's see what's going on. So this is vertical, but this is still horizontal. So let's make that a V grid and change this back to columns. Let's try that one more time. We should see a vertical grid now as we did before. All right, looking good, looking good. And instead of having four, we only want three uh, columns. So let's go ahead and change this to be relative. And uh, it looks like I spelt that wrong. Instead of adaptive, we want this to be relative. Looks like autocomplete doesn't want to work today. All right, let's try that once more. Uh, flexible, that's what I was thinking of, not relative. Don't mind my uh, little forgetfulness right there. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this twice. I feel like Apple uses these three words so interchangeably that uh, it's a bit of a guessing game. So we want uh, flexible here. So we want three of them. So now we've got our app icons. They're nice and rounded. They've got a little border on them. 
we can tell the Gmail and uh, Chrome here, rather Gmail and Google app are not blending into the background. We put into dark mode, still looking really nice. Now let's go ahead and add a little get button below each of those uh, app icons. So it's gonna be a button and we're gonna go ahead and create it with a title and an action. So we're gonna stick with this one. It's gonna be get, we're not gonna fill in the action. We'll just say do something because that's probably what should happen. We are gonna say that this guy has a foreground color of blue. Let's go ahead and add some padding. And let's also add a spacer in between the image and the button itself. Let's see what that looks like. All right, it looks like adding the spacer actually spaced it out for the entire screen. So you actually end up with something that looks like a table view. So that was not the intention. However, that was a cool little plug. Let's go ahead and get rid of that spacer. We should see it as a grid now with the get button below it. So that's still not looking quite right. Let's see what's going on. So we've got this here. Ah, what's going on is we want to embed this whole thing actually in a V stack. And that way it'll know that we want uh, both of these elements inside this vertically and each grid item will be a V stack. Well, let's actually add that spacer back because it should behave as expected now. And let's see it. All right, there we go, looking good. So this is exactly what we wanted it to look like. App icons are a little large, but uh, there you have it. That's how you can create a grid in SwiftUI with very little code. If we don't even include this content preview code, it's about 40 lines of code. Just to review, we've got a layout in which you're gonna specify grid items. It's an array of grid items in uh, this case. And each grid item can be flexible, uh, adaptive, that's the other one, not relative. Um, and fixed, and each of them respectively have differing behaviors. We've got items here, which is just an array of uh, image names that we dragged in. We embed our uh, stacks, our grid stacks, lazy or not lazy. There's a lazy version and a not lazy version. There's a, you can just have a standard grid also. We embed those inside of a scroll view, of course, to make it scrollable. And inside the grid, we do a for each loop over the items and each grid element is a V stack, in this case, an image and a button. And there you have it. That's how you create a grid in Swift UI. So if you like the video, make sure to destroy that like button as per usual. Hit subscribe while you're at it for daily Swift, Swift UI, other iOS uploads. Comment down below. What do you guys want to see? Video suggestions? Did you find this helpful? Are you guys building in Swift UI? Are you still, uh, working with UI kit. I know uh, me and Swift UI personally have a bit of a love-hate relationship. I think there's some cool things about it, but I think also there are a lot of uh, aspects of the framework that need uh, some development on Apple's part. So we shall see how the this evolves in the coming months and years. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Catch you guys in the next one.